I recently made a video showing how I make a fighter type spine using bamboo. I like bamboo because I can I can bend it and it will stay bent if I heat it with my hands or if I like press it against my belly here uh, and the heat of the body will help to uh, set the bend. So when I'm flying, I'm out flying a fighter kite, <clears throat> I can adjust the bend very easily in a bamboo kite. The only problem <laughs> is that if the weather is very humid or misting or anything that resembles that, the bamboo will tend to straighten out quite quickly. It's not uh, going to stay. So one of the solutions is to use a different material for a spine. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is resistant to changes in atmospheric uh, humidity or rain or anything else and, and very strong, very durable and easy to work with. Now to make a spine out of a carbon fiber rod, which is what this is, this is a carbon fiber rod. And what I did was I super glued, I tied a knot on one line at or near the nose. I tied another line near the wingtip point or near the center of the kite. On this line, I attached a glass bead, which I think you can see, but maybe not. You don't have to do this, doesn't matter really. I just think the bead provides a smoother surface for this line to slide across. And this line, I, I ran from the knot here through the bead and back up onto the line and tied a knot, a specific knot. One called a taut line hitch. And I will show you that uh, just in a few seconds here. how that's tied. And in the diagram, it shows wrapping the line around two times, and that works. But I sometimes wrap it three times in order to increase the holding power of the knot. And this knot is a slip knot. It allows me to adjust the uh, amount of tension on the line. So it's very simple to use. And one of the things I like about it is that it allows me to adjust the amount of bend I want in the spine while I'm flying. If the wind conditions change and I think, well, a little more bend or a little less bend would be beneficial, I can easily do that and it will stay there. Now, this is a round carbon fiber rod. And then I would simply install this in the kite, this being the nose uh, up here. This is the nose. Uh, I would flatten this out, glue it with, I use contact cement, but you can use whatever glue works for you. But I would glue this flat into, onto the kite sail right along the spine line. And then rather than tying it 
on the spine before I installed it in the kite, I would probably use a uh, soldering pencil like this and melt a couple of small holes in the kite sail material on either side of the spine and feed the, the line through that and tie it and make this adjustable tension line after the kite is completed. Now, you can do the same thing with a flat carbon fiber piece. This piece is about a quarter inch wide and about 0.04 inches in thickness. And with this, what I often do is I will drill a hole with my Dremel. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a small hole in the near the end of this flat piece of carbon. So rather than wrapping the line I use for the tension line, which is here, Rather than wrapping that around the line, around the spine, excuse me, I would simply put it through the hole and run it along the side of the spine that I install against the skin of the kite and super glue that. And I would do the same down near the wingtip line, drill another little hole and put the other, the other piece there and glue it accordingly and then when the cut and have the line there before I install the kite before I install the spine in the kite because then there's very little I don't have a very little noticeable in the finished kite that there's even a tension line there there aren't any holes in the sail or anything like that so if that's a concern a flat piece of carbon makes it a little bit easier to do that. Well, if you use a flat piece of carbon like this, and it's relatively flexible as this one is, I prefer the spine of my kites to be relatively stiff towards the tail. So if this is the nose, and it's going to be flexing here with a tension line, I would probably want to use a small section of bamboo and or a small section of a carbon fiber rod that I split in half and glue it with super glue along the tail section of the spine to add stiffness to that section and only that section of this spine. Now there's one other thing you can do if you don't want to do this, or you can do it in addition to this, <laughs> either way. You can actually split carbon fiber, either a rod or even this flat, thin carbon. I use a utility knife, which this guy here, and you simply, it takes a little practice, I have to say, because it's quite thin, but you can see here, I've already split this part, but this is split. Now I have put a toothpick in the split section to hold it apart like this. Now you can do this with a round rod just the same way. Either one works. And what this gives you is the opportunity put a, to put a permanent bend in the spine even though it is a it starts out as a flat piece of carbon fiber. <clears throat> and the way I do it is this, it's quite simple. 
if I'm going to put, let's say, just in this upper section of the nose, I'm going to put a bend in that that's permanent. Now, my, I may also add a tension line to allow me to adjust the amount of bend beyond that. But let's just say that I'm going to do this for this section right here. What I do is I put super glue uh, right here along the inside of the area that I split here. Then I remove the toothpick and I take the piece of wax paper that I've folded and I put this along the crease of the wax paper. Then I use a form that I've made from a portion of an aluminum yardstick. I just cut it off and just bent it with my hands in the shape I think would be good for a fighter kite spine shape. You can bend it any way you wish. I also have used one like this, which is a piece of steel that is used in house construction. It's just a piece of steel with a couple holes in it for some purpose. But what I did was that it was flat and straight, so I just bent it on part of it to create a form that I could clamp my spine to. So I glue the spine with super glue. I glue the spine with super glue. I place it on my form, and I like to keep the spine straight and parallel with the form. Seems to work better that way. Then I use <laughs> fancy clamps, <laughs> clothespins, and I use quite a few of them. And I clamp this down to allow the glue to set and to bond so that I'll have the bend that is the bend in the metal that I use as my form. Now I will tell you that after you do this, uh, the, the, uh, the bend in the carbon fiber itself will actually spring back to straight a little bit. It won't be, even though this shape here is what I'm gluing with super glue into the shape of the nose section of this spine, when it dries and I release it with the clothespins, take it out of the wax paper, and the wax paper simply prevents the uh, super glue from sticking uh, to the metal, which <laughs> originally I had trouble with. <laughs> and uh, But it will tend to straighten out just a little bit, so it won't be quite as severe a bend as what you might think you would get by looking at the shape of your mold here. Well, that's how I deal with and use uh, carbon fiber for my spines. I really, I like them. They're lightweight, they're very durable, and whether they're round uh, rod or whether they're flat carbon, it uh, doesn't matter. If you use round though, there is one thing. With flat, you don't have to worry about this because it's flat. There's only one way to actually mount it in your kite, on your kite skin. And that's with a flat side against the spine line of the kite sail. But with a round one, what you have to deal with is the uh, out of roundness that's inherent in all carbon fiber rods. 
they aren't perfectly round and you need to rotate it and you will when you do you will feel it uh, jump from one position to another some pieces of carbon fiber are way more pronounced in this than others but they all have a little bit of it and what you want to be sure to do is to glue it in a way that is in it one of its naturally uh, oriented positions you don't want it on the in between do you want it right where it kind of snaps to the position so that is something that i learned the hard way if you don't do that what will happen is the kite will actually begin will veer off to one side or another and you won't know why because maybe the kite's perfectly balanced and everything's perfect the bridle's right the tuning is right and yet it won't fly straight ever and it's because of this it's not oriented correctly when it was installed and uh, you can all you can always remove them i use acetone to remove them from because i use contact cement acetone will uh, melt contact cement and i can remove it and then reorient it and reposition it if i need to so that's uh, something to get you started if you have uh, an interest in using carbon fiber for your spines.